Hello Sim fans, this is Ram55 coming at you with another race from Virtual Skipper 5. Today we're doing the second race in our series of the uh, Melj Cup. It's round two, USA versus Germany. And again, I'll be uh, playing the role of the USA boat against artificial intelligence boats controlled um, by the computer. And today, the United States of America, you can see the attributes up there, hull, spinnaker, sails, and crew. Advantage going to the United States. And if you look at the weather bulletin, it's sunny with uh, four seven winds that are shifty. And uh, I'm not all that familiar with uh, the force speeds. I had to actually look it up. And that's based on the Buford scale. And a force seven uh, is described as high winds, um, moderate gale to near gale with wind speeds being 31 to 38 miles per hour or 28 to 33 knots. So that's pretty strong winds. I've actually uh, sailed some sail uh, racing sailboats in strong winds like that. Believe me, it's a handful. So here we are on the water and I am not gonna repeat the mistake I made last time when I didn't get across the starting line in time. Now again, we are starting about three minutes before the beginning of the race and I have to get across the starting line from the course side to the uh, pre-start side by the uh, two minute mark. So I've made it this time so everything's looking good. So now I'm just tacking back and forth up and down the starting line to assess the wind, uh, see if one side of the course is favored over the other and that would be totally dependent on the wind angle as it comes down and crosses the starting line. Sometimes starboard tack versus port tack is favored and um, something you just have to figure out by doing what I'm doing now, seeing where the wind is and see if one side's favored. So you can see on the compass over on the right hand side there's three arrows. Last time I couldn't remember, I, I, I didn't know what that yellow arrow is and that is the direction of the current. So um, that explains that mystery. So the blue arrow is the true wind direction and when you look at that um, graph on the bottom it says true wind angle, true wind speed, true wind direction 265. That is correlating to the blue arrow and then the uh, uh, apparent wind direction is the green arrow and that would be what I couldn't remember what the AWA is down the bottom right corner of that and that is minus 74 degrees right now. In other words if you take zero at the front of my boat 74 degrees to the left is where the um, apparent wind direction is. So now we're coming up to less than a minute on the start. I am on a port tack. The uh, German boat's on a starboard tack, so they have right of way. And again, sailboat races are all about who has right of way and using that to your advantage to get across the finish line first, especially in match racing. It's one boat versus the other, and you're just basically trying to beat that one guy across the line. I think the graphics on this thing are just awesome. You can see the white, foamy water kind of being blown, showing where the puffs are, basically little bursts of wind. Totally cool. And from what I understand, they are accurately modeled, so you can use those puffs to your advantage while you're racing. So now we're down to 12 seconds, and I can't cross the starting line until the gun goes off. So I'll zoom back out so I can get a better picture of where that line is. If you're really on a boat, it's easy to look up and down to see if you're across not so much third person view like we are now. So, okay, the, the race has started and we did not get a, a violation, violation of the rules. We are legally started now and we're eating to windward. Again, putting that uh, green arrow, or the arrow till it turns green, showing that the wind is at the optimum angle for me to go toward wind. Another thing I found out while I was doing some research about the compass arrows and the colors is the uh, little radar screen, as they call it, in the bottom left. It shows the bird's eye view of the course. Um, people who aren't really familiar with uh, the yachting rules and right of way, they are convenient and kind enough to color code the boat. So my boat's the yellow one, and the opposing boat is currently green. That means that I have right of way over him. He has to stay out of my way. I'm on a starboard tack, and he's on a port tack. And uh, 
he has to avoid me. And if he had right of way over me, then he would be red. That's an easy way to tell whether or not you have the advantage uh, and right of way over that other boat. So right now we got 30 knots of wind. That's blowing pretty strong, and that's a handful. So you can see we're crossing, and I am slightly ahead of him. I'm going to tack to cover him. Basically, I don't want him to get too far away, and you can see that I can make the course mark right now without any problem. And he may have to tack him. So I've got a slight advantage. I'm to windward of him, and um, I'm also slightly ahead of him. So I'm going to make this mark very easily. Now another rule that comes into play as you're rounding marks is whether or not you have overlap with the boat you're racing. Now if this guy, Germany, comes up and overlaps me, in other words his boat is overlapping my boat, I draw a line parallel to the stern of my boat, and he's overlapping, I have to, by the rules, give him room to round that mark. Since he's actually clear astern of me, I don't have to do that. I can cut this mark as close as I want. and. Uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now you can see I have to round that on the right side, so the mark is going to be off my port side of the boat, and I'm going to tack around the mark. Once we do that, we'll pick up where the next mark is that I have to sail toward. And there it is. I just had a glimpse of it off right there. So we're going to have to pass that mark to the left, in other words, it'll pass on my starboard side. And now it's a matter of hoisting the jib, finding that correct wind angle, making that arrow green, and remember last time how I was just putzing around because I didn't have the sails trimmed? Look at this fly now, 22 knots. And what you're seeing there is almost what's called a brooch, and basically when the wind is so strong it pushes the boat over, the uh, hull is curved, and that curved hull makes the boat want to turn to one side or the other. If you're leaning over to the left, it wants to turn to the right, and the wind is blowing the sails to the left. It's almost like the boat is tripping over itself, and that's called a broach. It's almost an out-of-control situation. Boats have been damaged. People have been injured in those situations. I've actually had that happen to me while I was uh, racing some Hobie Cats, where um, things just got out of control because of the, the high wind. So we're passing that mark to the left. We're on the port side. Now, I'm dropping my spinnaker, and I wasn't sure, do I, did I pass it on the correct side? I don't remember. So now I'm screwing things up. Skipper error again. Wasting the gym, because I can't, I'm not really sure if I passed that boy on the correct side. Well, I did. As you can see, the mark, the arrow is on the, uh, the next mark, not the one we just passed. So I wasn't sure there, that's why I dropped the uh, spinnaker. So I guess I could raise the spinnaker, but we're so close, I'm thinking, ah, let's just sail to that mark. Now it's also kind of interesting that the other boat is sailing what appears to be a different course. He's not following me like the uh, Australian boat did last time. I'm kind of on my own, and he's over on his own doing a different course. So I'm not sure how that happened or why that happens. But we are flying in this wind right now. So. this mark easily, and then we'll, it appears, turn to the right, which is to starboard, and pick up our next mark. Right. So pass that as close aboard as possible without touching it, and I can actually raise the spinner now, so let's do that and really get flying. Now this game comes with four boats. It comes with an America's Cup class, kind of like the uh, the old traditional, bigger than the 12 meters uh, sloops that they used to race, but uh, they raced them for a little while. It comes with a 60-foot catamaran, which is kind of what the America's Cup boats look like now. It comes with an offshore boat, uh, kind of like a Tartan 10, if you're familiar with sailboats. And uh, it comes with this one, which is the uh, Melj 24. It's 7.5 meters long, 24 feet long. It weighs in at 800 kilograms, which is 1,800 pounds. 
and it's uh, a one design boat. So there's fleets of these things all over the world that race against the exact same boat. The only difference between you and everybody else is you know, how well you sail and the cut of your sails and all that other stuff kind of makes for some exciting racing. Uh, this boat can reach a top speed of greater than 20 knots, which we've already seen in these wind conditions. So now I'm beating back to windward. Crew is uh, over on the uh, port side of the boat, trying to keep the boat flat. And there's the next mark, which we have round the right of it, so it will pass by our port side, our left side. And it looks like they tacked a little bit early there, so we not be able to fetch that mark. In other words, on this tack right here, I was hoping to be able to get around that buoy, but I tacked too early, so I'm going to have to make two more tacks, unfortunately, and that slows me down. So again, skipper error. Sorry, crew. Make a quick tack, go a little bit further. Tacking back and see if we can fetch that mark. Oh. Oh. Did it again. Not good. Trying to coast to get up high enough to round the mark, but it didn't work. So, had to tack again. Losing time. And unfortunately, since we're not racing head to head on the same course as that other boat, I don't know where we stand. So, it's skipper error again, and that's what blew the last race for me. Now we've rounded the mark. Where's the next one? Over to my left, according to the lay line on the thing. So let's place the spinnaker, and I think this is the race for home. Yep, this is the last leg. Oh, I've lost track of where that other boat is. I think we're in the lead. So we're just screaming for home. So as we progress with these series, um, I'll talk more about the different sailing rules. And basically, there's only maybe a dozen or so that really you need to know. And this game does a good job of telling you who has the right of way. Like I said, if you look at the radar screen, depending on what color the boat is, tells you whether he has right of way or you have right of way. And that makes all the difference when you're racing. And then there's some special applications um, like when you're rounding marks and overlap and luffing rights and all that stuff. So we'll talk about those more later. Trying to keep the boat on a steady course here. We're just blasting toward the finish line. And Ooh. we won. We finished ahead of Germany. So we have won our, sec uh, the, our first race, the second race that we've competed against. And also Switzerland, Spain, Japan, Australia, and France have won. So after two rounds of 11, we have moved into a tie for fourth. So we are currently tied with uh, Italy, Switzerland, Japan, and New Zealand. We're all one and one. Well, thanks for watching. This was the second race in our series against Germany, and we'll be back with round three soon. See you on the water. This is Ram 55.